Hey everyone out there, this is Torben. Greetings to all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. I hope you're doing good and uh, God is working in your life and uh, transforming you to look more and more like His Son Jesus, our Lord and Savior. I would like to just start saying that I am sorry. Um, I'm just sorry that gone so long time since you heard from me last time. My last update, it was when I shared about how uh, Lena was on that big attack and how she went to the hospital. And uh, that update had really got a lot of people praying for her all over the world. And the video has been seen more than 100,000 times. And I'm really truly thankful for that. And if you listen to this and have not seen it, I encourage you to go in and listen to the last update. I know that I should have come with update before, but there's so many things have happened here the last weeks since I did the last update. I've now been here over nine months and the attacks is real. It's just getting crazy and crazy in so many ways. And therefore, we are so thankful for all of your prayers, and uh, it really means a lot to us. But we also see how God is working. He's really working in Lene, and he's working in me in here. The last weeks have just been some of the most crazy weeks in my life, the most crazy spiritual attacks I've ever experienced. And it's not only us who are getting the attacks, our friends who are close to us, our legal team who are working with the case, they are all experience attacks. Attacks in their minds, in their emotions, and some even like laying in the bodies. I talked with one of the guys from our legal team just a few days ago, and he said, Torben, we have never experienced anything like this. Satan really don't like you. <laughs> And, and of course, it's special to hear that Satan really don't like you. But this is what we are feeling right now. We feel that he really don't like us. But it's because God has a plan and a purpose, and we have an enemy that always wants to stop what God is doing. But it's really not all bad what is happening, and I want you to know that. Because we are really seeing God's hand in all of it in an amazing way. It's like God's hand was all over Jesus when he got crucified. Even though it was the enemy who had the hand in Jesus being crucified, and the enemy, he thought that he had got victory when Jesus died on the cross. But we know that God was in full control the whole time and actually ended up with the enemy being defeated. And I believe this is the same we have seen here. God is truly moving in our lives. It's, it's very difficult to explain, actually, what is going on right now. But it's like the days is just a spiritual battle, especially around Lena. But the days is also victories. And it's like God is remaking us to become more and more like him, to become who he wants us to be in the next season in our lives. And, and he's revealing so many truths to us right now. Before I got detained nine months ago, I experienced how God spoke to me and gave me revelation out of his word, revelation that impacted my life and my walk with him. But it was something that happened like every second or third month when I really got one of those, whoa, revelations. But now, the last three weeks, it just been special. It's, it's, it's like God is revealing something new to me almost daily. God, God is speaking to me almost all the time. And I'm revealing new things to us and changing us. He's showing truth about suffering, about hope, about faith, about freedom, about the spiritual war we are in and the end times we are living in. Truth, I really look forward to coming out and sharing with all of you when it's all over. The world out there is changing and we need to be ready to stand in the ground, to stand in faith. And we believe God has called us to help the church to be ready for what is coming. It is to be not all for more than nine months. Spending as much time alone with God and in His Word can only transform you. I had a new man coming into my dorm, and he's only been here a few weeks now. He's a Muslim, and uh, right now he's fasting for the Ramadan. But he's a very nice guy, and I love speaking with him. The other day he came into my cell. And then he just stopped and looked at me with the biggest eyes 
And then he asked, Torben, you are shining. I see a glowing all over you. What, what is that? And I was really surprised here yeah, that uh, my first thought was that, uh, yeah, it was about Moses in the Bible, how he was shining when he came down from being at the mountain of God. And I thought maybe it's because I look more like him now with my full beard. But no, oh, I said it must be because I've been with God. And it was really a special experience because you could see in his eyes and hear on him that he really saw something special over me. The day after he came into my cell one more time, and then he started to complain about this place, how the phone do not work the way it should, how there's so much noise here, how there's no hot water, and right now it's actually really cold. So uh, we need to make our coffee and our soup with very lukewarm shower water. But this is what we have. And he was complaining and complaining, and the list was very, very long. And I just looked at him, and I saw myself in him. I saw that I had been there. I had been where he is. I had been negative, and I had been complaining. And there is a lot to complain about. But now I'm just thankful. Even for my lukewarm shower coffee. And I and I said to him that he, he needs to accept it or he will just take him down. And then he looked at me again and said, Torben, you're always so positive. How is that? But before I got the chance to answer, he continued, yes, I know why. It is because you are reading God's holy Bible. And then he pointed at the Bible laying on my bed. Then I asked him, of course, if he won one of my Bibles, and then he could read it for himself. But uh, he's not ready for that yet. But God is working him. Many changes have happened here the last week. Most of the men I have disciples have been deported or sent away, and many new people have come. And, and I'm now the one here who have been here longest time. A few weeks ago, a very good friend, my translator and my strongest disciple, he was sent home. And that is something he had been waiting for for many, many months. Or oh, so I thought. <laughs> I thought he was sent home, but instead I found out a few days later that they have put him in holding for five days. That is isolation where you are alone, have no one to talk to and no telephone or anything. The reason they put him there, I cannot share here, but it really seems very unfair. And when I heard that, I was very nervous for him, especially because I heard that he would influence his case and that he maybe might need to stay here even longer before he can leave this place. So I was praying for him every day, praying that he would not get disappointed and lose his new faith. It's only around three months ago he accepted Jesus and I baptized him into Christ. After five days in holding, I heard he was moved to one of the other dorms here. But a week ago, I met him again outside in Rick. That is like one hour where we can come out in a big yard with friends all around and walk around. And there he was. And he was very excited to see me. He came to me and said, Tom, Tom, I'm just like you now, Tom. Tom, I'm just alone in my cell all day with God in his word. And God has been teaching me and it's so amazing. I don't see TV, I don't play cards anymore, it's just God and me. And he was so excited and was telling about what God was doing in his life. Besides that, he, in his dorm, has now started a new Bible discovery group with eight others. And he said that he's now teaching them every day what I have been teaching him. And I was just thinking, whoa, come on. I've been so nervous for him that he would get discouraged and lose his faith. But he was so strong and he was producing so good fruit out there in another dorm alone. And I really see that it's the teaching about the kingdom as last update that truly makes him strong in a very short time. So now I'm even more excited to come out to all of you and share the same teaching to you. A few days after that, another new man came into my dorm. And I saw he had a Bible. He was not so good at English, but I asked him if he was a Christian or Catholic. Because many here are Catholic, but only by traditions and know very little about God and his word. But he answered no. And then he continued very excited to tell about what had happened the last week. 
How did when he came here to Baker County Detention Center, they first put him in another dorm. And how there in that dorm was people doing Bible study every day. And that is not the dorm my friend was in. This is another dorm again. And how they have got some papers for a kind of missionary, he says, who was on this place. And how that teaching from that missionary had been spreading from person to person and how they're now doing Bible study different places. And he told me all of that, very excited, with light in his eyes, not knowing that I was actually that missionary he was talking about. So when I told him, um, it is me, I'm actually that guy who have been doing the teaching. <laughs> you should have seen his face. He was so surprised and he just looked at me like, whoa, it is you. And I was just thinking, whoa, come on. I did not know about this, but there's people now in other dorms doing Bible studies and it's just growing from place to place and it's so amazing. And maybe there's even more places out there I don't know about. But it's truly amazing what God is doing in here and how the kingdom of God is growing. I want to say in the end here that Jesus is coming soon. And we already seen the harvest getting ripe. What I mean is this, that the wheat and the terrors is growing side by side and are all getting mature. You can read about that in Matthew 13. And now it's so easy to see the difference between good and evil, truth and lies, God's children and the children of the devil. And it becomes more and more clear to all of us. And this will continue becoming more and more clear until the day they all will hate us for following Jesus Christ. And until the day our Lord Jesus will appear in the sky. But uh, many other things is also going to happen before then. I want to encourage you to stand firm in your faith. Don't give up. Everything we read in the Bible about what is coming is the truth. I've now been here nine months. This has truly been the hardest time in my life. But I can honestly say that I've become free behind bars. I'm truly thankful for God allowing me to be here. Even it's still hard sometimes. And especially the last days have been a lot of attacks. But I'm thankful for everything he's done in my life. And what I see he's doing in David's life. And how he's preparing us both for the future. And we have faith in him that he will start a good work but also finish it. I want to encourage you to pray for the church because we need it so much. Pray that we will all be ready for the times ahead. Pray that God will continue to work in Lena and give her breakthrough and that I too will be released soon <laughs> and step into what God has for me next. I know today that God put me here and it has taken many months to come to that understanding. I know today that God is in control and it has taken me many months to come to that understanding. I know today's suffering is part of following Christ and it has taken me many months to come to that understanding. And there's so many other things I see now that I just don't see I could have learned in any other way. And even if hard, I'm really thankful for all of it, but I'm also ready to come out and share with all of you out there when time is. Please pray for our legal team and everything they are working with because we are in a spiritual war. Pray that the truth will come out soon and I want to end up saying thank you all for your love. Thank you for thinking of us and praying for us. It's this right now is special because today, the 4th of April, is actually Lena's birthday. And uh, and it's special that I'm not there. Um, I was in here at my birthday. I was in here at our wedding day, Christmas, New Year, my daughter's 18 years old birthday, Lena's birthday. And of course, it makes it extra hard. Um, yeah, tomorrow, the 5th of April, is actually my spiritual birthday. Tomorrow is 28 years ago. Jesus came and saved my life. I've been following him for 28 years, and I'm more in love with him than I've ever been before. And uh, I'm truly thankful for him. I'm thankful to him for saving me and what he has done in my life. And the last 28 years have been 
our journey I would not have been without. So it's a special day today and tomorrow. So thank you for remembering us. When it comes to our case, I know that there will be an update this week on friendsoftalking.com. And there will also be a new important interview coming out. And I encourage you all to see that one. And I know many other things are happening right now I cannot comment on. But this is what I want to share with all of you out there. Stay strong. Uh, love for me to all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. It's truly beautiful to serve our Lord Jesus. And there is no other life than this life. Even we go through different seasons and different trials. So God bless you all. Stay strong. And thank you so much for your support. And thank you for your love for me and Lena. Uh, big blessings. Hi, hi.